Hi, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Running, the trail and ultra running YouTube channel, and this is my review of the Scott Supertrack RC2, the super grippy trail running shoe for mountain racers. As with all the gear I test on my channel, these were sent to me by the brand, but they have absolutely no control over what I say in this review. So the updated Scott Supertrack RC2s came out in mid-June 2020. They're really light at 500 grams for a pair of UK size 6.5. The drop is five millimeters and the price is at the high end of the trail running shoe market at 130 pounds full price. You might see a drop in that online later, of course. So first off, I really like these shoes, especially their secure fit, their stability and the grip. I feel really connected to the ground, however rough it is. Just like their predecessor, the original Supertrack RCs, the five millimeter drop is low, but not too low for many trail runners. The toe box is wide-ish to accommodate most foot shapes. And there's a really secure fit with nice wide laces and a comfy padded tongue. The insole is different to all the other shoes that I've tested. It's grippy, so your foot doesn't move around. But there is one downside to this for some runners that I'll get onto in just a moment. There's enough cushioning for protection on long rocky runs, but not so much that you can't feel the ground easily under your feet. Makes you feel very stable when running on rough ground and contouring when you run on slanted ground. So what's new about the Supertrack RC2s compared to the original Supertrack, which was already very good? Well, firstly, there's a durable water repellent upper made of Sherla fabric. This is coated with three times dry. This is a blue sign certified technology that's environmentally friendly. If you've not heard of it before, definitely check it out and look for it when you're considering running gear. So three times dry technology makes the inside of the fabric hydrophilic. That means water loving. So it draws your icky foot sweat towards it and spreads it over a wider area so it can evaporate quicker and keep you cooler. This is combined with a hydrophilic phobic water hating finish on the outside of the fabric so while it's not completely waterproof it still repels puddle splashes and light rain. I really like this level of water repellency in a trail running shoe. It's great for protecting your feet from boggy ground that would usually soak a less repellent shoe and it feels slightly more wind resistant to me too. I feel safe and secure in cold and windy conditions wearing these that's for sure. The Sherla fabric also boasts something called cold black technology. So as we all know, dark matte surfaces absorb more heat from the sun than shiny light ones. So this mainly black shoe could be like a little greenhouse on your foot, but cold black technology reflects up to 80% of the sun's rays to keep your foot noticeably cooler. And it has a sun protection factor of SPF 30 as well. This isn't a huge deal for most British conditions, but if you're in hotter country or if you plan to race in a hot place, this could be very useful indeed. The second update is a change to Scott's already impressive radial grip pattern. So this has been tweaked to give Scott say 50% better traction in soft ground and with extra space between the lugs to allow it to clear. The cutaways at the arch also mean weight loss combined with more grip and again, less clogging. Well, I don't know about less clogging in the mud where I live. Certainly, I haven't found any shoe that doesn't completely clog up in the clay fields around Stamford. So this definitely isn't abnormal here, around here for any shoe with remotely aggressive grip pattern. Mm -hmm. However, I did find that the clag fell out of the super tracks after about five minutes of running on grass, which was pretty impressive. Clag free, really good. Now, I already really like the grip of the original Supertrack, and to be honest, 50% better? I can't tell the difference. They're both really good. So to me, version two is just equally impressive whilst contributing to the shoe's lower weight. And these have a fantastic set of teeth to make you feel confident on muddy hills and mountains. I really like these shoes. I think they're brilliant and I do recommend them to anyone with enough spare cash. However, as I mentioned at the start of this film, there is one significant issue that some runners may have with the fit of the Supertrack RC2s. So if I use them with the original grippy insole and normal single layer socks, they give me the most horrendous arch blisters after only an hour of running. This one was after a couple of hours running in them when I didn't have an option to shorten my route. It was very, very painful. 
The same thing happens to me in only one other shoe that I've tested, and that is the Salomon Speed Crosses. After about an hour in these, I get a blister, but more towards the center of the arch with these. There's no grippy insole to remove on these, but a double layer sock allows me to run without problems for twice as long before I start feeling it with these. And if I swap the insole out to a non-grippy one from another pair of shoes, then I can only feel the arch a little bit and it allows me to run for twice as long in single layer socks too. So that is a massive bonus. I put this out to the Wild Ginger Running test group to see if anybody else had had the same problems with the Scott shoes and there were a few people with exactly the same issue as me, so I'm not the only person with funny shaped feet. I've also sent this information to Scott as when I mentioned it to the guy who was answering my questions about the new shoe, he said that they hadn't heard of any problems like this before. So I'm going to keep wearing the Scott Supertrack RC2s with a combination of the other insole and double layer socks and see how far I can go in them before they give me an arch blister. I'm really pleased about this tweak as I really do love these shoes, but I'm puzzled as to why hardly any other shoes give me this problem, even straight from the box. So that's just something to look out for. Maybe if you're trying these on in a shop and you notice that you can feel the arch slightly, see if they will let you put a different insole inside and have another jog around the shop. It's just hard to know as you won't get that blister until about an hour in and no shop is going to let you jog around for an hour to test them out. <laughs> At least there are some solutions here, like changing the insole, wearing double air socks, and you can always resort to K-tape before you start running around your feet. It's not ideal though, you just want a shoe that fits really, don't you? <laughs> I'd be really interested to find out in the comments below if you've had this same problem with the Supertrack RC2s and the originals and how you overcame it. Your input will really help make this film as useful as possible for anybody considering buying a pair. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, click like, leave me a comment. And if you fancy treating yourself to a pair of the Scott Supertrack RC2s, the links to buy are in the film description below and they will give me a tiny percentage of the sale at no cost to you. So thank you very much if you do this. I've got a few more reviews coming soon, so subscribe so you don't miss out. I've got several more shoes to tell you about this summer and I'm gearing up for autumn at the moment, gathering waterproof jackets and trousers and two new exciting head torches from Petzl and Silver that I can't wait to tell you about. I always really like it when brands do something significantly different. So stay tuned for Wild Ginger Running for more gear reviews coming soon. Have fun, enjoy your run and I'll see you on the trails.